What happens when a director of successful monster movies decides he wants to switch gears and make a gothic psychological horror film? That's the topic for today's episode. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, childhood trauma meets surrealism, horror, and the occult. Let's check it out. Today's film is The Snake Girl and the Silver-Haired Witch. It's from 1968, a brisk 82 minutes long, beautiful black and white and Japanese with English subtitles. This is about a very young girl. She's about 11 or 12, I think. And she is living in an orphanage and she's reunited with her, her family. Why they were estranged to begin with, I don't really know. But uh, soon enough, she finds out that she has a very, very bizarre older sister and starts having these very intense and surreal nightmares about her sister being uh, half snake, half human, about this witch that's chasing her, and things develop from there. Uh, the director is Noriaki Uwasu. Um, he was uh, having a very successful career uh, directing Gamera films. In case you don't know, this Japanese monster films, Gamera was a prehistoric flying turtle, very popular, very successful, and he decided he wanted to break, so he made this gothic horror film. It's very heavy on atmospheric cinematography. It has a lot of vibes from the classic uh, Universal Studios uh, horror films, the monster films, and there's a very tense musical score with lots of violins that build suspense and uh, heavy reliance on the theremin. The main character of Sayuri is played by Yaki Matsui. She's in almost every scene, so we are meant to identify with her. The, she also has, a, it's from her perspective, and there's a voiceover, which is partially her looking back on what happened, but mainly her inner thoughts as she goes around this house and starts to try to understand and process what's going on in this house along with us as we try to process it too. Um, she's uh, very good in this film, uh, a little limited as far as her expressions go. She tends to rely on the same confused expression or worried expression over and over again. Otherwise, she's good. Um, her nightmares are, are there's about three or four very surreal sequences that are her nightmares. Almost reminding me a little bit of the Spellbound dream sequence, the Hitchcock film, Spellbound. And uh, in these nightmares, very cleverly, they mix uh, real people, like the snake girl is a girl with snake makeup on her face. And then it shifts to uh, puppetry, where she's sort of chasing her and floating through the air. And it's very cool how they mix those two together, including snakes and spiders. You see real ones and fake ones. At one point, the snake girl throws a snake at uh, Sajuri, and the snake in midair turns into a sword and kind of pins her to the wall. So very interesting, cool stuff going on. Eyes floating in the air and very cool stuff going on here. Um, but things are chasing this young girl. Things are crawling all over her and things are attacking her. So what is going on in this house? Well, uh, as soon as she gets there, her dad, who seems to be the only normal guy in this film, uh, besides the young girl, she, uh, the dad leaves. He has to go away to Africa. He does research on venomous snakes, of course. There's a bunch of them in the basement in this house. Uh, Mom is a little confused. She had a brain injury, a head injury, from an accident, so she's kind of spaced out. There's a maid we're not too sure about. And then there's the sister who wears this strange mask over her face. It clings to her face. So you can see her face, but it's like a, a plastic sheen over it and very expressionless. It reminded me a little bit of the film Eyes Without a Face, but it's a different kind of mask there. But the sister becomes increasingly evil and increasingly controlling as the film progresses. Now, according to the booklet, this was supposed to be intended as a kid's film. And sure enough, while I was watching it, I thought, is this supposed to be a kid's film? Because it's so, told so much from the perspective of this young girl. But if it was a kid's film, it would be extremely traumatic for a kid to watch this. Why do I say that? Well, you have the evil sister that you had no knowledge of before suddenly showing up in your life uh, with this weird face. 
that you have these nightmares, these snakes and spiders attacking you, sometimes in your bed while you're sleeping and you wake up and there's spiders all over you. Um, she gets, this is a little bit of a spoiler here, she gets locked up at one point and tied down. She gets attacked. Her parents are pretty much absent, a common childhood fear, of course, abandonment. And the witch that chases after her as well has this very maniacal laugh uh, slash str uh, uh, shriek to her. Um, this is an early uh, J-horror or Japanese horror film before The Ring came along and sort of started that whole trend. Um, not everything in here makes sense. Not everything is explained, which is common in these types of films. Uh, for example, if the snake girl is really just the young girl's imagination and doesn't really exist, then why do we see the snake girl when the young girl is not around? We still see her. So that's never explained. The whole thing about the silver haired witch, how she shows up in different places is never really explained either but you just have to kind of roll with that in films like this. Um, other elements in this film include um, the occult, uh, Japanese folktale influence. Apparently snakes were a very common animal that would possess humans. Um, there's a manga influence here. There are there's some very startling and surprising images and occurrences in here that I don't want to give away, but I will say that for the most part, it's pretty unpredictable what turns and twists this film is going to uh, take you through. So my rating for The Snake Girl and The Silver-Haired Witch is four and a half snakes, of course, out of five. Um, the only problems I had is uh, the young girl, the main character, is sometimes a little too overly positive and optimistic uh, uh, considering what terrible things she's going through. And the ending is a little bit pat and a little bit sentimental. Otherwise, really enjoyed this. If you're a horror fan, especially a Japanese horror fan, I think this is one you really need to check out. So what's on this disc? This is an Arrow disc. Looks great. Sounds great. Um, there's a booklet that's pretty informative and has some artwork in there, original artwork from the uh, film posters. And it's about 16 minutes, uh, 16 minutes, 16 pages long. But I like the booklet. Um, there's a commentary, which I did not listen to. There is one main extra, which is a, a guy who's an expert on Japanese folktales and manga, speaking about the connections to this film. That's about 30 minutes long. And there's some uh, artwork also. I switched it out. So this is a very nice slip cover. And then I put the this artwork, here we go, uh, as a little variety. And you have the this artwork here on the other side if you want to use that instead. So where can you see The Snake Girl and the Silver-Haired Witch? It's on AMC Plus if you have that. It's on Shudder if you have that, which I do. Uh, good news is it's on YouTube for free. You can check it out there. You can always buy it. I would wait, of course, for a 50% off sale, which is when I bought this at Barnes & Noble for 20 bucks. Um, otherwise, it's a good one. So feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down below. Leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Our next goal is 425 subscribers we're shooting for. I need about 20 more to get to that next goal. I want to give a shout out, as the kids say, to our newest subscribers since the last episode. That includes Arexi Mendez and Thomas. Thank you so much for subscribing. And also, people who commented, I want to thank you too since our last episode. That includes Michael, Tina, Emma, and Kate. Thank you for your comments. So feel free to comment or subscribe. Hope you like this episode. Thank you for watching. See you next time.